Happy Monday, Discovery Learners! It is I, Teacher Liz, here with another episode of Ability to Learn from the Discovery Day program. Today, I'll be sharing with you some cool observances, interesting history, cool facts, cool animals, and plants. And let's not forget, there's a new Spanish word to learn and a new place to explore this week. And also, don't forget to log in every day to the live Zoom sessions provided every day by the Discovery Educational Team. Now let's not delay any further, let's start the show. And now for today's observances. Hello there Discovery Learners, Teacher Liz here, bringing your newest episode of Ability to Learn on today, Monday, the first day of November, 2021. Now let's start off with our observances, shall we? Our first observance is something we observe all month long. It's National Native American Heritage Month. National Native American Heritage Month during November celebrates the diverse and rich culture, history, and traditions of Native peoples. The observance is also time to educate anyone and everyone about different tribes, raise awareness about the struggles of Native peoples faced in the past as well as in the present. Native American pictures, words, names, and stories are a crucial part of American history and help mold our life today. Thousands of years before Christopher Columbus and his crews landed their ships in the Bahamas, the Native Americans had cultivated lives and communities there. Native American history overflows with a variety of diverse groups and prominent leaders and figures like Crazy Horse, Sitting Bull, Sacagawea, and Pocahontas. Native Americans were always known for hard work and quick instinct. Today, there are about 4.5 million Native Americans in the United States, making about 1.5% of our population. Take some time to learn about and celebrate their culture this month. So how do we observe Native American Heritage Month? Well, here are some suggestions. Read a book about Native American history or a novel that dives into the history and traditions of Native people. Movies like Pocahontas tend to sensationalize truths about Native American history, so reading a book will likely give you more of a realistic version of the story. Play a game of lacrosse. Believe it or not, lacrosse is one of a variety of indigenous stickball games of Native American Indians, played as early as the 12th century. Wow, what an interesting fact, I did not know that. There are also a few movies made about Native Americans that aren't as over sensationalized and are definitely worth a watch. And finally, maybe learn the true story about the very first Thanksgiving, the true story. Not what you were taught in elementary school. That story isn't quite accurate. So how do you plan on celebrating Native American Heritage Month? Go ahead and let us know what you plan to do in the comment section below. Our next observance is National Brush Day. Hmm, I wonder what kind of brush day may be talking about the day after Halloween. <laughs> National Brush Day on November 1st reminds all of us to follow the American Dental Association guidelines. Sometimes the day is referred to as Brush Your Teeth Day. The day follows Halloween, like I mentioned earlier, which traditionally is the single most significant day of candy consumption in the USA. The simple act of brushing your teeth twice daily for two minutes can have substantial impact on cavity prevention. It also impacts a myriad of oral diseases such as gingivitis. It is important to encourage brushing after meals and especially after sugary snacks like Halloween candy. Maybe teach your kids or nieces and nephews a two minute song to hum while brushing their teeth. Some good tunes are Twinkle Twinkle Little Star, Row 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 Your Boat, or Wheels on the Bus. So how do we observe National Brush Day? Spend some extra time explaining the importance of brushing your teeth to children. Replace your toothbrush. It might be time. And most importantly, don't forget to brush your teeth for at least two minutes. Our next observance is a tasty one. It's National Calzone Day. Oh my gosh, calzones. I love them. 
If the air is resplendent with the aroma of garlic and tomato sauce on November 1st, it might just be time to celebrate National Calzone Day. Calzones take the delicious toppings of cheese of a pizza and tuck it in tight in a warm, garlicky, crusty package also known as a calzone in some parts of Italy. Like the pizza, it originates from Naples. It looks much like a turnover. As varied as pizzas come these days, so do calzones. Did you know the loose translation of the word calzone from Italian to English is trouser legs? <laughs> this translation may explain the purpose of a calzone, which is essentially a handheld pizza pie. However, carrying out the task of eating a calzone while walking on two legs is pretty hard, consider that they pretty much overflow with a bounty of cheeses and meats and vegetables and sauces. It would just get messy. Calzone dough is infused with garlic and butter to add flavor. Sauces made from scratch with Italian herbs and spices lend the old world fare to every calzone recipe. By the time the mozzarella, provolone, or parmesan melts in the sausage, spinach, or whatever choice ingredients, the aromas fill the air. No wonder our mouths begin watering. So take a seat, invite some friends, and enjoy the evening savoring a well-made calzone. Do you like pizza? And do you like calzones? If you do, let us know which ones you like and what toppings you like in the comment section below. Our next observance is National Cinnamon Day. The holiday season is starting to warm up with National Cinnamon Day on November 1st. It's the spice that ushers in a season while being versatile all year long. What other spice flavors the holidays better than cinnamon? <laughs> Of course, cinnamon's quintessential warm films are homes with welcoming scents like no other. For generations, cinnamon elicits fond memories of holidays with family. It sweetens apple pies and is the base for pumpkin spice. With just a touch, it kisses the sticker doodle too. We raise a toast with it on chilly evenings in frothy beverages. And cinnamon preserves are bounty all season long. So how do we observe National Cinnamon Day? Well, you could invite some family over to join you as you bake up some of those special cinnamon recipes. Or maybe create new traditions and find the latest ways to use cinnamon in your home and in your cooking too. There are so many delicious ways to use cinnamon and it's good for us too. Add ground cinnamon to your morning coffee grounds or top your toast off with cinnamon. There are so many ways cinnamon makes things better. So no matter how you use it, from the scent to the flavor, this is a sure way to spice things up this season. So do you like cinnamon? And if you do, what do you usually eat cinnamon with? Go ahead and let us know what that is in the comment section below. Go ahead and comment down below and let us know how you plan on observing, well, these observances for today. On this day in history. Today, in 1969, the Beatles' Abbey Road album goes number one in the U.S. and stays there for 11 weeks. Abbey Road is the 11th studio album by English rock band The Beatles, released on the 26th of September in 1969 by Apple Records. Named after the location of EMI Studios in London, the cover features a group rocking across the street's zebra crossing, an image that became one of the most famous and imitated in popular music. The album's initially mixed reviews were contrasted by its immediate commercial success, topping most record charts in the UK and the US. The single Something and Come Together was released in October and it topped the US charts. The album incorporates genres such as blues, rock, and pop. The album has also been ranked as one of the Beatles' best-selling, including a multi-platinum certification by the RIAA. EMI Studios was later renamed Abbey Road Studios in honor of the album. A deluxe version of the album was released in September 2019 to celebrate its 50th anniversary. In 2020, it was ranked 5th in the Rolling Stones list of greatest albums of all time. Go ahead and leave a comment below and let us know what you think of today's historical events. Notable figures born on this day. 
Our first notable figure born today is Crawford Williamson Long, born November 1st, 1815. This American surgeon and pharmacist is best known for his first use of inhaled sulfuric ether as an anesthetic. Before he was famous, at the age of 14, he had graduated from the local academy and applied to the University of Georgia in Athens. He unfortunately passed away June 16th of 1878. But an interesting piece of trivia to know about him is, while he was attending University of Georgia in Athens, he met and shared a room with Alexander Stevens, who was the future vice president of the Confederate States of America during the American Civil War. Yikes. Happy birthday, Crawford Long. Our next notable figure born today is Anthony Kiedis, born November 1st, 1962, in Grand Rapids, Michigan. This American musician is the lead vocalist for the band Red Hot Chili Peppers. The band has received seven Grammy Awards and is known for such hit songs Scar Tissue, Other Side, and Give It Away. Before he was famous, he met his future music partner and longtime friend Flea while at Fairfax High School in Los Angeles. He turns 59 years old today. Happy birthday, Anthony Kiedis. Another notable figure born today is Jenny McCarthy, born November 1st, 1972, in Evergreen Park, Illinois. This pinup model, MTV personality, and actress who starred in her own sitcom before later joining The View as a co-host as a start of the 17th season. She subsequently became the judge on the Fox show The Masked Singer. Before she was famous, she attended three different high schools and was cheerleader at two of them. She turns 49 years old today. Wow, climbing up there. Happy birthday, Jenny McCarthy. An additional notable figure born today is Tony Collette, born November 1st, 1972, in Australia. This Australian actress became known for her roles in United States of Tara, Muriel's Wedding, and The Sixth Sense, About a Boy, and The Hours. In 2018, she appeared in films Please Stand By, Heredity, and Hearts Beat Loud. Before she was famous, she attended an Australian school of theater for young people and got her first acting gig in the play Godspell. She turns 49 years old today. Happy birthday, Tony Collette. And last but not least, our final notable figure born today is Matt Jones. Born November 1st, 1981 in Sacramento, California. This American comedian is perhaps well known for his recurring role as Badger in the acclaimed AMC drama Breaking Bad. He will become a veteran guest actor on numerous notable television series. He landed voice roles in Sanjay and Craig and Nickelodeon's Pig Goat Banana Cricket and plays Baxter on CBS's series Mom. Before he was famous, he spent many years at Boom Chicago in Amsterdam before moving to Los Angeles. He turns 40 years old today. Wow. Happy birthday, Matt Jones. Happy birthday, everyone. Discovery learners as we explore a new place of the week. This week we are traveling to the Dominican Republic. And do you hear that song in the background, Discovery Learners? Well, that's the national anthem of the Dominican Republic. Now as you go ahead and give that a listen to, let's learn a little more about the Dominican flag. This nation's flag is quartered blue, red, blue red with a central white cross. When the flag is used for official purposes, it incorporates the coat of arms. When the island nation was split into two different countries, Haiti and the Dominican Republic, the flag was changed into alternating squares of blue and red, and due to its predominant Christian religion, a white cross was also placed in the center. 
The coat of arms incorporates on its central shield of the national flag a Bible and a cross, together with branches of laurel and palm, the name of the country, and the country's motto. The current iteration of the Dominican Republic's flag has been in use since November 6, 1844. Wow, that's been a long time with no changes. Pretty cool. Now let's dive right in and learn a little more about the Dominican Republic. The Dominican is located in the West Indies that occupies the two eastern thirds of Hispaniola, the second largest island of the Greater Antilles chain in the Caribbean Sea. This nation borders Haiti to the west, the Atlantic Ocean to the north, and with the Puerto Rican island to the east. The official name of the Dominican Republic is Republica Dominicana, which means Dominican Republic. Its head of state is a president, and its form of government is a multi-party republic with two legislative houses, the Senate and the Chamber of Deputies. The capital of the Dominican Republic is Santo Domingo, and its official language is Spanish. The most popular religion of the Dominican Republic is Catholicism, with Christianity at a close second. The current population of the Dominican Republic is 10,614,000 people. The Dominican Republic has a total area of 18,551 square miles. That's about 1.6 times smaller than the U.S. state of South Carolina. The main monetary unit of the Dominican Republic is the Dominican Peso. 56 Dominican Pesos equals 1 U.S. dollar. The main exports of the Dominican Republic are cigars, plastics, electrical equipment, bananas, jewelry, and clothing. Wowee, the Dominican Republic sounds super interesting, and I can't wait to teach you more. So be sure you stay tuned all week long as we teach you more about the Dominican Republic, here on Ability to Learn. Wow, now that's a really interesting place of the week. Here is the animal of the day. Today's animal is the grizzly bear. Grizzly bears is a subspecies of the brown bear. These huge animals originate from Europe and Asia, but today they can be found only in North America and Canada. They live in the woodlands, forests, and valleys near rivers. During the 1970s, the number of grizzly bears dropped significantly because of the mass hunting. Since that time, hunting of bears is prevented by law, and their number gradually increased in time. Today, grizzly bears is a threatened species, which means it's almost endangered, but not quite. Here are some interesting facts about the grizzly bear. Grizzly bears have brown fur, but hairs on their shoulders and back have white tops, which give them a grizzled look. This is why they are known as grizzly bears. You can recognize a grizzly bear by the hump on their back. The hump is made of muscle. Grizzly bears use growls, roars, and snorts to communicate with each other. And grizzly bears are huge animals. Most of these bears weigh between 300 to 800 pounds. But some captured animals weigh up to 1,400 pounds. Yikes! That's huge! A grizzly bear can be up to 3 to 4 feet in height when it's on all four legs. And it can reach up to 8 feet tall when it stands on its feet. Oh my goodness. Although grizzly bears are large animals, 75% of their diet is comprised of berries, leaves, and nuts. They also like to eat fish, rodents, and moose. Animals that eat plants and animals are called omnivores. Male grizzly bears are solitary animals, which means they prefer to live alone. They can be seen in large groups during migratory season of salmon. Bears will enter shallow waters and catch the fish while they're jumping out of the water. They will eat up to 25 fish per day. When they are preparing for hibernation, to gain as much fat reserves as possible, they'll eat up to 3 pounds per day. Hibernation lasts between 5 to 8 months. 
During hibernation, their metabolic processes breathing and heart rate will slow down, and they will survive solely on their fat reserves. During hibernation, grizzly can wake up at any time. Mating season lasts from late spring to early summer, and female bears can get pregnant when they enter early hibernation. They usually give birth to two cubs a few months before hibernation ends. The cubs will stay with their mother two to four years. She is very protective of them, and if you come close to her cubs, she can easily kill you. Yikes! The baby cubs can climb trees when they're young. A few years after, they'll lose this ability because of their long claws. Bear claws is long, like human fingers. Grizzly bears are excellent swimmers. They're also fast runners. They can run up to 30 miles per hour. Oh my gosh, they sound kind of scary. They have perfect eyesight and excellent sense of smell. They will detect smell better than a hound dog. The grizzly bear lives up to 30 years in the wild and up to 40 years in captivity. So what do you think of today's animal? Is it cute? Is it creepy? Go ahead and let us know what you think in the comment section below. The plant of the day. Today's plant is the aster. The aster is a herbaceous plant that belongs to the family of sunflowers. More than 600 species of plants were known as asters before the implantation of modern molecular methods of analysis. According to the latest classification system, only 180 species of plants are recognized as true asters. They originate from temperate regions of Eurasia. Aster grows in moist, well-drained soil in areas that provide plenty of sun. People cultivate and use aster in decorated purposes for at least 4,000 years. Aster is still popular and widely cultivated in gardens because of its beautiful flowers and that are also often used in preparation of various floral arrangements and bouquets. Here are some interesting facts about the aster plant. Aster has a direct stem with woody base. It can reach from 8 inches to 8 feet in height, depending on the species. Aster produces simple leaves that can be long, thin, and oblong shaped. Leaves of some species are serrated on the edges. They are dark green colored and alternately arranged on the stem. The aster develops flower head that consists of 300 small flowers located centrally and numerous petals, ray florets, on the outside. Miniature flowers in the center of the flower heads are always yellow, while surrounding petals can be white, purple, blue, lavender, red, or pink colored. The aster blooms from July to October. Fragrant, colorful flowers attract numerous bees, butterflies, and flies. They are responsible for the pollination of this plant. Fruits of the aster is the acne, which are equipped with wings. This facilitates dispersal of the seed by the wind. The aster plant propagates by a seed or division of the stem. Seeds start to germinate in 15 to 30 days after planting. The name aster originates from the Greek word aster, which means star. The name refers to the star-like shape of the flower heads. Asters are also known as frost flowers because florists often use them during the autumn and winter for preparation of various floral arrangements. Asters are the ideal present for people born in September and people that are celebrate their 20th anniversary. Aster symbolizes patience, love, good luck, and daintiness. Flowers of the aster were smoked in the past due to widespread belief that the smoke of the plant protects against evil spirits. Flowers of some aster species are used in treatments of migraine, the common cold, muscle spasms, and sciatica. Most species of aster are perennial plants, which means they live more than two years. And only a few species are annuals, which means they live one year. It's that time again. We just learned about a new plant. So go ahead and tell us what you think in the comment section below. The word of the day. Today's word is fretful. It is spelled F-R-E-T-F-U-L. It's an adjective. It means feeling or expressing distress or irritation fretful. 
Our next word is a word you may have heard somewhere in today's episode. That word is myriad. It's a noun. It means a countless or extremely great number of people or things. Having almost infinite or very many elements or aspects. Myriad. Hola, Discovery Learners. So, y'all, do my extra list. Hi, Discovery Learners. It is I, your teacher, Liz. Aquí es su palabra en español de la semana. What that means is, here is your Spanish word of the week. Su palabra para esta semana es primero, 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 which means first, primero, first, primero, first. You can use this word in a phrase. El primero de noviembre es el día de los muertos. El primero de noviembre es el día de los muertos. El primero de noviembre es el día de los muertos. Which means, November 1st is the day of the dead. El primero de noviembre es el día de los muertos. November 1st is the day of the dead. Go ahead and practice speaking Spanish all week long by saying El primero de noviembre es el día de los muertos, which means November 1st is the day of the dead. ¿Cómo se dice first en español? Primero. Sí, muy bien. Hasta la semana que viene, Discovery Learners. Be sure to tune in next Monday to learn another Spanish word of the week here on Ability to Learn. Hey Discovery Learners, it's me Andrew Lancaster here with some fun new movies to whisk you away from Kansas this week. First up is Oz the Great and Powerful. This film has a rating of PG. It was made in 2013. It's a family fantasy with a 2 hour and 10 minute runtime. It stars Mila Kunis, James Franco, Rachel Wise, and Michelle Williams and is available on Hulu. Our next offering is The Wizard of Oz. This film has a rating of G and was made all the way back in 1939. It's a fantasy drama with a 1 hour and 52 minute runtime. It stars Julie Garland, Ray Bullocker, Burt Lahr, and Jack Haley. And you can find it on Hulu. Next up is Legends of Oz Dorothy's Return. This film was made in 2013 and has a rating of PG. It's a family musical and it has a 1 hour and 28 minute runtime. It stars Dan Aykroyd, Kelsey Grammer, Martin Short, and Jim Belushi and is available on Amazon Prime. And this week's cinematic work of art is The Wiz. This film was made in 1978 with a rating of G. It's a musical with a 2 hour and 16 minute runtime. It was directed by Sidney Lumet. It stars Diana Ross, the late great Michael Jackson, Richard Pryor, and Nipsey Russell. And you can find it on Peacock. The Wiz. This is one of my favorite versions of the story. The music is stylized to the time and with some extra soul thrown in, add to the rich and colorful landscape made using practical effects and matte paintings. The film throws in an excellent usage of existing structures that added to the atmosphere of the story that better connects to the youth of the time. This film feels like less of a remake and more of an update that uses some of the time's greatest artists of color and ease the spirited remake down the road making it a cinematic work of art. Now playing at the Discovery Theater this Friday starting at 1 p.m. know what that song means. It means we reached the end of today's episode of Ability to Learn. I had fun! 
And I hope you had fun too. But not only had fun, I hope you learned something as well. Don't forget to click like, subscribe, or to hit that bell icon so you'll be notified about all the fun we're having at Ability to Learn from the Discovery Day Program. This is Teacher Liz signing out. Farewell, Discovery Learners. I will see you next time.